Hello, welcome back. What I want you to do is solve this first equation on the left on your own. So stop the video, come back, make sure you got it right. All right, if you solve this equation correctly, you should have gotten that x is equal to three. Now, looking at how I did it, I added two x to both sides. I collect my variables first, the two x on the right cancels out. Your other option would be to subtract 3x from both sides, and that would just mean that your entire equation is reversed in, set, in that you would have negatives on the right-hand side, or on the left-hand side. No, on the right-hand side. And then um, I subtracted 5 from both sides. The 5s on the left-hand side cancel out. I'm left with 5x equals 15. Then you divide both sides by 5, and you end up getting that x is equal to 3. Now, believe it or not, there are several different properties that just happened in the solving of this equation. So we're going to try to solve this equation one more time using multiple steps. So let's take a look at the right-hand side of your paper. Side. It is actually the same exact problem. So we're going to solve this problem again, but you're going to now follow all of these steps that I am going to write for you. And believe it or not, there are so many properties that we just use in getting that answer x equals 5. And what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is basically break this problem down into as many possible steps as that I could possibly think of, and we're going to justify what we did with a property. Now, all you are going to be responsible for is the property. I'm never going to ask you to break down the problem in the way that I break down the problem. And just be warned, the way I'm going to break down the problem is going to see some, seem somewhat crazy to you. So just write down the step and write down the property and just listen to my explanations. Okay, bear with me. All right, so the very first thing that most of you probably did is you probably added 2x to both sides. And so the way I'm gonna show you with the property is we're now gonna say, step one, I'm gonna say 3x plus five plus 2x equals negative 2x plus 20 plus 2x. And so when we're naming properties, you're always going to be looking at the line above it to the line that you're currently on. So what changed from here to here? Well, what changed is I added 2x to both sides of the equal sign. That property is called the addition property of equality. So this is kind of our new property. It's called the addition, and I'm just going to write add prop of and I'm just gonna write an equal sign. So that stands for the addition property of equality. So basically the property of equalities are when you are doing something to both sides of the equal sign, okay? So now, step two, suppose I have this, and you should write this as you're listening to me say. Suppose now I have 3x plus 2x plus five equals negative 2x plus 2x plus 20. So what changed from step one to step two? Well, what changed is I've moved the order of the 3x and the 2x and the negative 2x and the 2x. So changing order, that's the commutative property of addition. And so I'm just going to abbreviate so I because I don't have enough room. All right, step three. Suppose in step three now, I put 3x plus 2x inside parentheses with a plus 5 on the outside. And then I put negative 2x plus x, or I'm sorry, plus 2x inside parentheses plus 20. So from step 2 to step 3, what I just did is I added parentheses. I changed the grouping, right? That's the associative property. So anytime. I change grouping, that's the associative property, and in this case it's of addition because we're adding what's inside the parentheses. Step four. What if now I have an x on the outside of the parentheses and inside the parentheses I have three plus two plus five equals, I have an x again on the outside of parentheses and I'm gonna make it negative two plus two plus 20. What did I do there? Well, technically what I kind of did is I factored out my GCF of x here and here. I put the x on the outside of the parentheses. What makes factoring out GCFs possible is the distributive property. If I take this x and I put it back in, that right there 
is the distributed property. So basically from step three to step four, I've done the distributed property. I've just done it backwards, right? That's still the distributive property. So this is distributive. All right. See what I mean? It's getting kind of crazy. Step five. You didn't know all these properties were happening in the solving of this equation, did you? Step five. Suppose now I have x times five plus five equals x times 0 plus 20. So one thing I'm going to give you about this is in this step right here when I did 3 plus 2 equals 5, that's really not a property, it's just addition. So that problem, addition and subtraction, all of those would be given to you. But I have another property here, and that property, anytime you see a 0, you're looking to see, well, where did that zero come from? Well, negative two plus two, well, that's the additive inverse property because negative two plus two gives me zero. So that's the additive inverse. All right, next step, step six. Step six, suppose I now say five x plus five equals zero plus 20. There are two properties going on here. The first one is happening on the left hand side. I changed x times 5 to 5x. I changed the order of multiplication. That is the commutative property of multiplication. I put a star for multiplication. And then on the other side I did x times 0 is equal to zero. Well, whenever you multiply by zero, well, that's the multiplication property of zero. So this is multiplication prop of, and I'm just gonna draw a zero because I've run out of room. All right, again, reminder, you don't have to know why or you don't have to be able to break up the property problem. You just have to be able to um, understand what property is happening from step to step. So I'm never gonna ask you to come up with the steps. So the next step, suppose I have five X plus five equals 20. Well, what property is that? I changed zero plus 20 to 20. That's the additive identity property. All right, step eight. Step eight, suppose I say 5x plus 5 plus negative 5 equals 20 plus negative 5. That property right there, what I did there is I added negative 5 to both sides. Now when you guys solve this, you start isolating, you subtracted 5 from both sides, this time, I'm saying I'm going to add negative 5. The reason I'm going to do that is because I technically could throw in another property. So I'm adding negative 5 to both sides. That is the addition property of equality because I added negative 5 to both sides. If I, didn't if I did subtract 5 from both sides, that would be the subtraction property of equality, but that's not what I did. Okay. The next step, step 9. I'm now going to say 5x plus 0 equals 15. So in this step, what changed is I added 5 and negative 5 to get 0. That is the additive inverse. All right, now if you're starting to run out of room on your paper, so you can write a little bit smaller, you can also start writing a little bit onto the left side of your paper. If you've completely run out of room, then just pay attention, okay? Number 10. Number 10 now, let's say I have 5x equals 15. What I did now is I added 5x plus 0 to get 5x, and that is going to be the additive identity property because whenever you add zero to something you get the same thing back that's additive identity so we are almost at finding out what X is let's try this next step now this next step suppose I said so 
of 11, suppose I said one-fifth times 5x equals 15 times one-fifth. Now typically when we solve equations, we don't multiply both sides by a fraction. But think about what I just did here. What I just did from step 10 to step 11 is I multiplied both sides of the equation by one-fifth. The reason I would do that is because it's the same as dividing by five. I don't want you to solve equations this way. I just want you to see that that's a possibility and that's a property, right? We multiplied both sides by one-fifth. That is the multiplication property of equality. All right? So now when I go to do that, step 12, I'm going to get 1x equals 3. So one thing I did here is I did some multiplication. And I'm also just realizing that I think in a step previous to this one, I missed something. Yes. Let's go back up to step 8 for a second. Here from here to here, I did do some addition. So let's go right and addition up here. You would not be expected to give that to me. I would typically give that to you, but I don't want to confuse you. We did do that and I forgot about it. All right, now let's take a look from step 11 to step 12. I did do some multiplication in two places actually, but one we're gonna say is a specific property. So over here, five times one fifth is three. Here, one fifth times five x, I'm now saying is one x. But when you multiply inverses of each other, or reciprocals of each other, the result is 1, right? That is multiplicative inverse. All right, step 13. We're almost done. Step 13, I get x is equal to 3. So in this step right here, 1x turns into just x. So what property says 1 times x equals x? That would be the multiplication property of identity, which is multiplicative identity. I said it wrong. Multiplicative identity. So who knew that this equation, we've actually used 13 properties to get the answer of x equals 3. Again, you just need to know what property is happening. This is no different than the stuff that we've been doing before except that now we've added two, four different properties. We've added the addition property of equality, the subtraction property of equality, the multiplication property of equality, and the division property of equality. And it's basically any time that you do any operation to both sides of the equal sign, that's your property of equality. Hopefully now that you've listened to my first explanation, you can do problem one without any help from me at all. So stop the video. I want you to try it and then come back in to see if you did it right. So this is should be what you got from step one to step two. I multiplied both sides of the equation by one third. That's multiplication property of equality. And then from step two to step three, right here I just did some multiplication, which is why I wrote that. And then what I did now is if, look, I have one-third in parentheses, but then I put one-third times three in parentheses. I'm asking you to group one-third and three together. When I ask you to group some things together without changing order, that's the associative property of multiplication. Step four, one-third times three resulted in one. That's the multiplicative inverse because we're multiplying reciprocals. And then step four to, oh, this weird step four, that should say step five. Um, one X to X is actually the multiplicative identity because you're multiplying by one. Try the next one on your own. Tune back in to see if you've got it right. So here are the answers to number two. Double check to see if you got it right. If you're at all confused about any of these properties, please make sure you ask for some help. When you're ready, try number three on your own, tune back in, make sure you have the right answers. Seriously, stop the video, try it, see if you got it right. Here are the answers to number three. In this particular problem, if you on this line here, step two, if you also wrote the associative property, you could do that as well. On a test or a quiz, I would not put those 
these two things in parentheses, I would have just written a plus c plus negative c, b plus c plus negative c, and I wouldn't put these in parentheses. But I, since I did, if you did write associative here as well, but you also have to have addition property of equality, because what happened is I added negative c to both sides. Notice it's addition. You wouldn't say subtraction, even though adding a negative is like subtraction, because I'm you're taking what I wrote literally. You're adding negative c to both sides. So, stop the video, try number four on your own. And here are the answers to number four. Notice in this one, this is the first time the subtraction property of equality got used up because I subtracted three from both sides. And then, um, this might be a little bit confusing, 3x minus 3x, because you can change that to plus negative three equals zero, that's considered the additive inverse property, which is sometimes a little bit uh, tricky for people. The other thing to note, if you haven't already noticed, that the inverse property happens before the identity property almost every time. Actually, inverse always happens before identity. So if ever you're bouncing around and you notice that you're getting identity on the wrong line, it's probably because you're skipping the inverse property. Inverse and then identity happens almost always right before identity. Sometimes the inverse happens um, a, step, a step or two before the identity property, but inverse will always happen before identity. So you're responsible for completing the rest of this paper on your own and getting the homework done. Good luck. Please let somebody know if you are struggling.